Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force to refine crime-fighting strategies using evidence-based data. More legal teeth have been given to the agents overseeing public health in St. Lucia. The chef's in-schools cook-off simmers this week. All that plus the latest in new development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. The United Nations Development Programme, UNDP Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean and the Regional Security System, RSS, launched an automated police records management information system for the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Held at the Grosley Police Station on June 12, the launch marked the official handover of computer hardware and software to the police force to support the implementation of key activities under the UNDP's Carry Secure project. Carry Secure was born out of a UNDP Caribbean development report that cited the importance of data to the formulation of crime-fighting strategies. The 2012 UNDP Caribbean Development Report, which focused on citizen security, crime and violence in the region, pointed to the high levels of violent crime plaguing the social well-being of the region. Most importantly, the report concluded that policies and programs could not be developed in the absence of timely and reliable data. The newly launched Police Records Management Information System is a key component of the Carry Secure project which seeks to improve youth crime and violence policy making and programming in the Southern and Eastern Caribbean through the use of quality, comparable and reliable national citizen security information. Assistant Commissioner of Police George Nicholas says the new system will seek to address this dearth in data by improving the quality and quantity available within the criminal justice system. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force can use this type of software to monitor criminal activities and criminal trends and to evaluate the efficiency of the strategies that are used in fighting crime. This system will assist the Royal St. Lucia Police Force in providing a mapping of criminal activities offering case management to track the status of a case, evidence or related documents put into the case, dispatching officers or teams based on the availability and locations, managing communication with citizens, report on the evaluation of criminal activities and also to assess the efficiency of police departments. Supporting the project is the United Nations Development Program with a funding grant of 150,000 US dollars towards equipment and training. The Citizen Security and Rule of Law Specialist with the UNDP, Juliet Solomon, says the project supports the work of the organization towards helping member states achieve Agenda 2030. A crucial basis for achieving SDG 16 is access to accurate, standardized, easily accessible crime and violence data in order for frontline actors like police, or, like police forces to do their jobs to the best of their ability and for policymakers to design information and evidence-based policy decisions. As a starting point for the collection of data in the criminal justice system, the police are a logical partner in the formula formulation of evidence-based crime prevention policies and programs and building capacity within the organization is vital. Indeed, it is concrete initiatives such as these that promote progress towards the SDGs, which highlight the importance of our work and the nece necessity for partnership in achieving our objectives. Police officers deployed to a crime scene will now have the means to electronically enter specifically disaggregated information into a computer, store that information, retrieve real-time data, analyze trends and prepare reports in a more efficient and timely manner. The system will be piloted at the Grosley and Miku police stations. Meanwhile, the St. Lucia Parliament has passed a bill which will facilitate the island's participation in further ensuring citizen security across the region. The bill, titled Caribbean Treaty on Mutual Legal Assistance in Serious Criminal Matters, was passed in the lower house on Tuesday evening. It was the next step in a process that began 14 years ago. 
In July 2005, St. Lucia signed the Caribbean Treaty on Mutual Legal Assistance in Serious Criminal Matters along with other CARICOM states. The treaty provides for each signatory to give support in keeping with their laws the widest measure of assistance at any stage of an investigation, prosecution and judicial proceedings in relation to serious crimes. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney highlighted key areas of the 30 articles contained in the treaty, including the definition of terms. Serious crime, which means an act or omission under the laws of the state party, which constitutes a criminal offense punishable by at least 12 months imprisonment or more and includes an offense against the law relating to taxation. Under Article 2 of the treaty, the purpose of the treaty is to increase cooperation and in mutual legal assistance amongst Caribbean countries with respect of serious criminal matters and to combat criminal activity. The treaty provides a definition for mutual legal assistance to include a identifying and locating persons and objects, taking evidence or statements from persons, obtaining the pr production of judicial or other documents, serving judicial documents, examining objects, sites and premises, providing any available information and relevant exhibits, providing originals or certified copies of any document and records, facilitating the personal appearance of witnesses, affecting a temporary transfer of persons in custody to appear as witnesses. And that was Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney. More legal teeth have been given to the agents overseeing public health in St. Lucia. This after the Parliament approved amendments to the Public Health Act. General Norville fills us in. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service, the Honorable Alan Shastner at Tuesday's sitting of the House of Assembly presented the Public Health Amendment Bill. The amendments to the bill provides environmental officers with greater latitude to fulfill their mandates as well as stiffer penalties for violation of the Act. Section 11 of the Act is amended in Clause 10 of the bill to give officers powers including the ability to request information, seize or take samples of substances, and take photographs and videotapes when they have entered premises. Clause 11 of the bill amends Section 15 of the Act to increase the penalties to be imposed for con contravention of the Act from $250 to $50,000 and from $25 to $500 and to increase the term of imprisonment from three months to six years. Clause 12 of the bill amends the act to insert new provisions relating to the use of force to authorize the minister to amend the schedule of the act by order to be published in the Gazette. The act is also amended for the making of regulations for a beauty and wellness center, a spa, a massage parlor, and a body art facility. Minister with Responsibility for Foreign Affairs and MP for Castries Central, Honorable Sarah Flood Bobrek, threw her support behind the bill. The minister indicated that consideration must be given to another health hazard, noise. I've got a serious problem in my constituency and I've received letters and petitions and emails. I've had to have meetings with the Castries City Council and with the housing authority and with the police because I have many complaints from my constituents about the level of noise within the city. Now we all appreciate that if one lives in the city, one should expect to have more noise than usual. But the level of noise within the city and in some neighborhoods in, in St. Lucia is unacceptable and it's causing a health problem for many of our citizens. And it is important that our health legislation, not just our public order legislation, but our health legislation recognize that noise levels that are unacceptably high can cause serious health problems. Minister for Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor and MP for Castries North, Honorable Stevenson King, expressed a strong support for the bill. He also called for immense support for the relevant personnel given the challenges that lie ahead, especially as it relates to the indiscriminate dumping of garbage. So we need to ensure, and I appeal to the Prime Minister, Minister for Finance, 
to give support not only in the legislation, otherwise it will simply be on the books, but to give support with the personnel that will enforce the legislation. And, and, and there's another aspect of, 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 of that which I hope we will reintroduce, what we used to call the, the um, police zodi. What, little one, sorry. But they, they were very, I mean, M Mr. Speaker, they were very effective. The House of Assembly met on Tuesday, 11th June, 2019. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. The Consumer Affairs Department within the Ministry of Commerce, International Trade, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs has officially opened the doors to its new home. More in this report. The Consumer Affairs Department, or CAD, has moved from the fourth floor of the Heraldine Rock Building, Waterfront Castries, to the Abraham Building at the corner of Miku and Coral Street. The new office is set in the heart of the nation's capital, which means greater accessibility for the public, as well as a more holistic approach to consumer protection. Director of the Consumer Affairs Department, Guillaume Simon, says the move helps facilitate the department's growing scope of work and responsibilities to the public. The department has evolved and it was felt that consumer affairs needed to be more in the city centre where it would have catered to the consuming public, the needs of the consuming public. Throughout its existence, the department has promoted consumer rights and interests through policy guidelines and appropriate legislation. Through the CAD, consumers can seek redress from businesses which have not acted in accordance with their consumer rights. The public can expect greater expediency in terms of addressing consumer complaints. The public uh, will have more direct access to uh, the department and uh, the offices of the department. And I believe that the public will be able to, um, again, have their concerns heard by a department of a trained set of, ca a trained cadre of, of professionals. The department is continuously evolving. It is hoped that over time, the CAD will become more familiar to the public, the public in turn become more empowered, and with that power, create an equilibrium between consumer and provider. From the Ministry of Commerce, International Trade, Investment, Enterprise Development, and Consumer Affairs, I am Jacques Kingston Compton reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible. And remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome, everyone, to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. 240 soft touch volleyballs have been delivered to the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, courtesy Volleyball St. Lucia. During a brief presentation on Tuesday, the organization's marketing officer, Manda Simon, expressed the hope that the equipment will increase gameplay among the nation's youth. The donation of these soft touch balls represent Volleyball St. Lucia's unwavering commitment and support to the Ministry of Youth and Sports primary and secondary school volleyball program. Um, to expand on this a little bit, in the South, um, Volleyball St. Lucia has had a volleyball program in collaboration with SMJ Beverages where we've brought volleyball to the primary schools in the South, namely, namely Labry, Bands, Etangs. These schools have benefited from this program. It helps fight and combat childhood obesity and it's a, how should I say this? Oh, sorry. 
and it promotes a healthy lifestyle among the youth of the South. We wish to see this program expanded and brought forth to other primary and secondary schools on the island. Coaching coordinator at the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Anthony Lamontine, was on hand to receive the equipment. We are most uh, thankful for the generous contribution by uh, Volleyball St. Lucia. Of course, equipment is uh, one of the, the um, necessities once our coaches get out there within the communities and schools. And a number of coaches have been making requests for greater supply of equipment, particularly balls. And so we're very grateful for this. We hope that we could spread the love of St. Lucia uh, Volleyball across the island through the use of the boards that you have donated here today. Thank you very much once again. Deputy Permanent Secretary Mrs. Liotta Charlemagne Mason commended the initiative. Not very often are we on the receiving end and this morning we are really excited to be the ones receiving stuff this morning. Um, these light touch balls will allow us to, to be able to introduce volleyball in our primary schools and of course our grassroots program and for this we are very excited. Volleyball St. Lucia's latest move to advance the sport in St. Lucia follows its 2018 annual sports awards ceremony held on Saturday at the NSDC Conference Center to honor outstanding performers in volleyball. We have an update as we went to studio on the finals of the school's under 15 40 overs cricket competition between St. Mary's College and Leon Hess Comprehensive at the Groselay playing field. Rain delayed the start and reduced the game to a 35-over encounter. Leon Hess went into bat after winning the toss and were dismissed for 133 in 32 overs, with Kant Elcock top scoring with 32 and Sanjay Francis adding a crucial 30. Aaron Joseph and Kiki Gustav both picked up three wickets each, bowling for St. Mary's College. And that's our update for today. From Youth Development and Sports, I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. 20 students from 10 secondary schools throughout the island will go head-to-head -head at this year's Chefs in Schools Cook-Off, slated for Thursday, June 13, and Friday, June 14, 2019. Participants will have two opportunities to wow a judging panel made up of seasoned local chefs. The first round is the Signature Dish category, and the second, Mystery Basket. A number of the island's resorts have stepped up in recent weeks, transforming their kitchens into training spaces for the young competitors. These partners include the Bay Gardens Beach Resort, Cap Maison, Coconut Bay Beach Resort and Spa, Jade Mountain, Ladera Resort, Margot Bay Resort and Marina, Sandals Halcyon, Sandals Grand, St. James Club Morgan Bay St. Lucia, and Windjammer Landing Villa Beach Resort. The team to emerge victorious this week will go to represent St. Lucia at the upcoming Caribbean Junior Dueling Competition in Barbados, which is set to take place in August. Second and third place winners will receive the gifts and cash prizes. The competition will take place at the Sufra Comprehensive Secondary School from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and will feature participants from the Castries Comprehensive, Leon Hess Comprehensive, John Audler Memorial, Antropo, Babano, Sir Iris Simmons, Angers, Chauzel, St. Joseph's Convent, and Soufrière Comprehensive Secondary Schools. The Chefs in Schools Cook-Off is supported by the SLHDA's Tourism Enhancement Fund and co-sponsored by Winfresh. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayor. Cyclone ni force capable pour détruire tout ça qui est chez moi. Nous passe à deux bouts, mais nous ça fait préparation pour protéger la vie, bien et propriété nous. Premièrement, c'est fournir un plan pour management des as pour femme ou. Longtemps avant saison de cyclone là commencé. Discuter plan avec femme ou et faire assurance que tout le monde connaît ça y est pour faire. Bon, tout le monde. À nous discuter plan management cyclone nous pour de l'année passée. Ou aussi de venir une boîte de provision avec des choses qui n'ont pas besoin de mettre dans le frigo et qui dit que pour checker le temps. Manger un tin, had, de l'eau, lampe, radio, batterie, oui, mais des choses pour nettoyer le corps. Provision est spéciale pour les mamans, les grands, les gens qui sont malades et les infimes. 
pas oublier pour replacer bagay kon blo, manje we med ek battery wegli. Asiwe ki asiwans loto ek kayu on dat, ek chen tout papier e poto an kod lo pa kaj jwen yo. Asiwe ki kayu adam bon kondisyon. Koupe tout bon chek vie pie bwa ki pou e kayu. Sezon siklon se jen pou novamb, me preparasyon se tout lan yo. Pa we kow. Se an komisyon pa group management des as pie fo, ek plas management des as an sent li si. Ek finanse pa l'Ajans pou Developman Internasyonal Amerik, biwo asistans des as lot peyi. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Kweon. Mesi yota an Nisha. Mesi madam, Departman ki nevez konsablite pou informasyon an Gouvernman Set Le Si, GIS. Ase me pi Televizyon Nasyonal peyi a NTN, ka pose to Nouvelle a Kweon. Pose to Primus Hutchinson. Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chastney déclarait que il est toujours été pris en faveur cette fois-ci pour que l'argent de la banque paye même pour le projet de redéveloppement et de l'aéroport de l'Honorable International en Vieux-Fort. En adresse, il y a un cas qui est marié. Honorable Premier ministre Chastney déclarait que la décision pour prêter l'argent pour financer le projet de l'aéroport de l'Honorable Banque de cette fois-ci a dit pour servir un troisième partisan. C'est vraiment une décision très excellente. Selon le Premier ministre Chastney, même si le gouvernement a accepté l'agrément de en bas concession, la partie de pièce de garantissement payée à Tekaï en profit, le Premier ministre a dit que le gouvernement n'y a pas de décision pour prêter l'argent en qui servi un troisième partisan pour financer le projet européen, qui a aidé pour payer à sauver l'argent pour payer la dette trop primaire en bas construction ou développement européen. Premier ministre Chastney bay assurance la ki concession te kay pou an komès 30 lanè me la pande ni pièce garantissement ki se tli si te kay touve rekompans pa pati sa sa la. An ou ap Chastney di ki e kay trop pli an favè peyi a pou pote la jan sa la an bak peyi a menm. Silon Premier ministre la e kay pli fasil pou peyi a peyi det li pli bonè ek pou rezo sa la le restan la jan ki sorti a ba poje a gouvernement kay sa servi pour financer les gros projets, par exemple, le grand chemin est sorti face à Nord pour ce pays-là. Le Premier ministre a dit que le pays a inspiré pour plus de bateaux touristes visités et aussi plus de hôtels pour bâtir. Ça a augmenté pour plus de 100 étrangers pour visiter, mais il n'y a pas juste arrivé en hôtel de 100. Comme ça, selon le Premier ministre, il n'y a pas de possible pour payer pays pour payer pour payer tout le dette en plus de, en moins de 10 ans. Le gouvernement a prêté 202 millions 600 000 dollars pour le banque de cette ici pour le projet de développement et de l'aéroport de l'Honorat International à Vieux-Fort. En parlant de ça, le ministre de la Kinéva se consacrait pour le développement économique de l'Honorat Gaï Joseph a contribué à la déclaré que pour un pays qui a trouvé plusieurs lunettes et coups de chapeau pour progrès à l'industrie touristique au Liban, il a trouvé voté ko li mo yon pou katite etwanje ki ka maye a se te si, se pa yon bon sin pies le vini pou belte e repo etenasyonal hi wano rod. Oni wab Josef fe plet di le yon moun vizite e repo etenasyonal hi wano rod, ou ka kwe ki, ou ka wè lani bom ek mamit pou pa wè dlo ki ka sorti, abe ka kou le sorti an se fatay la. E di ki, se yon go hontez pou pe ya. Minis la deklare ki, Le projet de développement pour l'aéroport de l'Honora International, c'est ce qui est très important parce que 95% de tous les touristes qui ont visité pour les vacances sont à l'aéroport de l'Honora et qui ont été entrés. Alors, selon l'Honorable Joseph, ce qui est encore plus important malgré l'industrie touriste, c'est ce qui est plus important pour l'économie du pays. L'Honorable Joseph a vu que 35 dollars qui ont été payés pour le service de l'aéroport ni yon 20% pou kouve loun la etyeman si yon ka yon dezas. Alò, le ou ka pe la jen ki bak la ka madi pou yon lane ou ka sove 20%. Si lò yon wap Josef, an sek lane ou ka sove peyman pou yon lane etyeman ki te augmente an ba kondisyon agreman epi bak la. Nos pe ya te yon lot lane ka obzove semen nos ape setle si asosiasyon nos rekognese ek onwe nos ole wong pe ya pou tout travay wèd yo ja fe ek abilite yo pou pochewe servis da yo hodegwe. Selebrasyon teni plizye aktivite 
Association de ce pays a été commencé une célébration avec observation semaines en sorte de l'administration finance et puis en conférence d'éducation. Le président de l'association de ce pays, Alicia Baptiste, parlait de l'importance pour nous qui a trouvé une bonne protection pour les capables pour délivrer une bonne occupation pour les gens qui sont malades. Selon Baptiste, il est très important pour l'année assez nos pour sa procurer des degrés d'assistance qui sont nécessaires pour assurer la protection de nos et les gens qui sont malades. Baptiste veut dire qu'il y a des gens qui sont malades pour procurer des degrés de service qui sont placés à la danger et encourager ces gens pour quitter le service de nos. Le ministre qui est responsable pour santé, honorable Maria Isaac, complémenter ces gens pour dédication, pour travail et service pour les gens qui sont malades. Le ministre de la Santé a fait ce dans qui, même si il y a une capacité pour suivre la science de la profession, ce n'est pas seulement si fi pour faire une capable de la profession. Il veut dire que la profession, profession ne peut pas même pour eux, parce que c'est une profession qui est très importante. Nous avons Isaac fait un appel pour ce dans continuer pour procurer un bon service pour ce qui est. Et c'est pour ça que nous avons une nouvelle là. Pour garder, je vais vous une invitation pour que je vous encore. Si vous avez la vie, vous pouvez vous donner une nouvelle vidéo. Après ça, je vais vous donner une nouvelle vidéo. Merci, Pil Primus. Et ici, nous allons voir ce qui se passe à nous. A weak tropical wave will produce a few scattered showers over the southern Windward Islands during the forecast period. Saharan dust in the vicinity of the wave is limiting convection and showers. Another tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 20 miles per hour or 31 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. The tide for Castries Harbor was high at 12.22 p.m. and was low at 5.32 p.m. The tide for V4 Bay was high at 1.29 p.m. and was low again at 6.59 p.m. The sea is moderate to locally rough with waves 4 to 7 feet or 1.2 to 2.1 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to above normal seas. The sun will rise Thursday at 5.35 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Misha Charles.